Rusty from Rusty Barrel Home Brewing. What's going on, guys? Um, today, I finally have an episode covering my um, canning uh, routine. So just kind of going through some of the setup with the gas tank and the keg, uh, some of my equipment and uh, tips and techniques on how to do that. Yeah, here we go. All right, what's up, y'all? Uh, pulled my, uh, some of my equipment out just so y'all can see. Um, this is obviously my CO2 tank with the dual regulator. Next up is the beer gun. This is the Blickman beer gun I uh, use to uh, fill the cans. Okay, many of you guys are probably familiar with this. Um, you hook your, you can use one of the CO2 lines into the back of here and uh, hit your cans or bottles with gas. And then this is the beer line that goes to your keg. Uh, this is my keg of beer. This is a small keg. I use, uh, keep sanitizer in there to clean up, uh, to clean this uh, beer line. So, so uh, one thing I say about ha having the dual um, regulator, if you have one, uh, it comes in handy because uh, I'm gonna run one side of the gas to the beer gun, uh, which I like to have a kind of a higher PSI, like uh, usually like 10 or so. Um, and then on the other side, I'll run to the keg, which I'll turn down to like five. So um, the reason for that is you don't want the beer coming out of your beer gun too fast or it will, uh, you know, foam up a little bit. So um, that's one thing to consider if you're buying new equipment. Um, the, having the dual regulator has a lot of other um, flexibilities, especially if you're doing a kegerator and stuff. Um, so anyway, uh, what I'm going to do first is... Um, let's get, I'm going to hook up my beer gun first to one of the other side. This just conveniently screws on to the same connection that the uh, ball lock fitting goes on. So, tighten that up. Turn my gas on. And this is So that's ready. Um uh, what I'm probably going to do is this side, it's not really relevant for today, but this side goes into a splitter. So I have behind me, you can see I have four tap kegerator. So this side goes into a splitter and splits three ways. I'm just going to use one of these and turn the other ones off for now. Uh, turn this on. And the first thing I'm going to do is hook up to this. And this, like I said, has sanitizer in there. Now I'm going to hook up my beer line to this just to clean it out. And I clean it after every use. I leave sanitizer in the hose. I clean it after every use, but I just like to run some in there anyway. Uh, okay, that should be good. And now I'm going to turn this down. And let the air out. Uh, BK. This is probably at like 10 or 15 PSI to carbonate and stuff. Uh, Add that back and do it at like five. Should be good. You can go pretty low, um, but not too low or take forever to fill your cans. Uh, but not too high because it will come out in foam. So uh, it's a balance. This sanitized bottle, usually if I'm doing um, cans and bottles, 
Usually I'm doing one or the other, but tonight I'm doing a uh, can. I'm bottling some for a homebrew competition, so I usually send bottles just to save on cans. Um, one thing you might want to do, if even if you're just doing cans, is do a couple bottles first until you get your, um, you know, fill level and everything right. Uh, usually when I'm doing, if I just do cans, the first one is not right for whatever reason. Uh, too much foam or something. I usually like to do one or two bottles first. Um, the only thing we need to do is with this over to here. I believe this is good. Got gas. And pour it out until uh, to get the uh, sanitizer out of there. And so the beer's coming out. And then, get all the, my sanitizer out as you can. Purge CO2. And then go ahead and fill with beer. It's pretty much the same for bottles and cans. Um, This one's a little heady. First one can sometimes be heady. Um, you'll get a feel for bottles and cans, what they what the fill level should be. This one, I'm gonna let a little bit of foam pop out before I call it done. See that is, it'll probably go a little bit higher. You wanna cap. They say to cap on foam, if you can. If the foam doesn't rise all the way up, then it's a little, it's probably under carbonated. So, um, here we go. Doing the cap off camera. So what I was trying to say in the last video was that when you fill your cans, you want it to be foamy. When it's coming out of the uh, gun, you want to make sure that that is foamy. Even if you're not, um, even if it's not coming out very fast, you know, five psi or lower, it should be foamy. You should be having foam come up in your can because um, if it's not, it's going to be under carbonated when you actually go to open it. And the reason for that is, uh, you kind of, well, me personally, I like to over carbonate my uh, beer when it's going in the can or bottle because once it's sealed up in there, uh, the head, some of the CO2 from the beer is gonna come out into the head space. And so that makes the pressure that when you open the can, it pops open, okay? So you don't want, if you only have a, enough for serving, like draft level carbonation in your can, then that's gonna come out into your head space. If there's, if there's significant head space there, you will get the chick you know, when you open it, but then the beer will actually have lost the carbonation. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna do another can and show what I like to have it look like. And I'm actually gonna turn this down. So sanitize the can. Purge it with CO2, then fill it with beer. I don't know if you can see that really. But you can see it's coming out heady, and if it's coming out too heady, um, then you know your beer will be, your can will be uh, underfilled. So that's another problem. So you kind of have to feel it out. Um, I have to get as much.
go. Boom. All right. Uh, just to say a little bit about this canner. This is October uh, canner. I forget the model number. It's like an SLK something. It was, uh, no, 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 no. Um, it might be the MK. This is an old canner. Um, I got it from a, I got it secondhand from a uh, beer bar. It's kind of beat up. I need to do better maintenance on it. I had to uh, fix some of these components here and I probably need to clean it up. You know, these these probably need some oiling and stuff and clean up here. Um, I don't use this canner very often. This, see this part is coming out. Um, I might have to shove it back in there because some of these pieces broke and I had to just kind of jerry rig it. I'm not really good on fixing stuff like that, but um, anyway. Um, the newer, this is an old model is what I'm saying. This is an old model and uh, the newer ones, this is like a one that a, a beer bar would buy. Um, I think this originally was over a thousand dollars, but nowadays they have the homebrew versions, which are, have uh, much improved uh, features. And look, these don't even have the, never even came with the knob. This is a little wobbly. Um, but they have improved features of splash guards and you know updated components and stuff and they even have one that you can use with a drill um so it saves you money from having to buy this big one with the motor on the back um so if you're looking at canning machines i haven't tried any of the other ones but october i mean like i said this is a second hand and it's all beat up but it still works great um so yeah that's all i gotta say about that right here what you can do is um, weigh your can. So this is the first, second, and third can. Usually the first one is going to be a little light. And you can figure out what um, this is one pound and 0 0.8 ounces. Second count, second can is 15.9 ounces. So that was a under, that was a less filled than that one. And this is one pound and 1.1 1 .1 ounce so this is the best one you want it to be the most the uh the heaviest as you can so these this is you know i'll probably rate tests on that so that i know here's a commercial can that's one pound 1.5 ounces so this one is probably pretty good i've seen it one pound and uh two ounces yeah this is about the same one and 1 1.4 so you can that's one way you can kind of check to see how you're doing so you don't want you don't want it to be under carbonated and you also don't want it to be uh under filled this is it, you kind of have to figure that out um so yeah i think that's it really uh one other thing i was going to say about these cans is that you can feel um from the hardness of it if it's a good fill or not especially right here you'll feel that if it's soft right there then you know that you you did an underfill i mean if you're not you can tell from weighing it but just um i can tell that these are all pretty good fills because sometimes you feel it right there in the saw and i can tell like if i'm canning something up to uh take to a party or something uh if i, I feel each can if i feel some soft ones then i'll set them aside for myself or whatever um but yeah, these are all, this is actually, this is all pretty good. All right. Well, that was my canning setup. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or anything else you want me to show in a, uh, another video. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, here on YouTube, TikTok. Uh, I got blog going on my website, rustybrillhomebrewing.com.